Around October 2013, Adobe Systems announced that 153 million user accounts were breached, exposing emails, encrypted passwords, and more. At the time, this was the largest data breach in history. Now this sounds bad enough already, but several bad security decisions by Adobe actually made it much worse, and also much more interesting, as I'll soon show. Before I go over the major mistakes, I just want to say that I definitely don't condone hacking, and everything I'm going to explain in this video is to provide education so you can avoid being a victim of hacking. Passwords are hopefully never stored in plain text. They're encrypted, and usually there is no decryption key, so not even Adobe knows your password. When you type your password on a website to log in, it applies the same encryption and then compares the encrypted keys to each other to make sure the passwords match. And yes, Adobe at least did that correctly. The problem is that everyone that uses the same password also has the same encrypted key. That means if a single password is hacked, let's say via a phishing scam or something, all other accounts with the same password are also instantly compromised. And don't forget, even though these are just Adobe accounts, they have associated emails, and people tend to use the same password on multiple accounts. Even without knowing any passwords, these keys can still give away a lot of information. For instance, the most frequently occurring keys are likely to be the most common passwords. Lists of the most common passwords are well known and can be tested one by one. And of course, once you find a match, you know all those accounts. The way to protect against these types of attacks is to salt the password. What that means is the password is combined with either the username or some other unique identifier before encrypting. That way, every password gets a unique key. Unfortunately, Adobe did not do this. The second big mistake was password hints, which is a very bad idea. Inexperienced people sometimes make hints very obvious and are very vulnerable, even without a data breach. This problem is further compounded by the lack of salting that I mentioned earlier. Even if you leave your hint blank, if anyone else had the same password and left a stupid clue, you're immediately vulnerable too. And even without an obvious hint, lots of vague hints can be just as revealing. One last mistake I want to mention is that they used a block cipher. What that means is it only encrypts blocks of data in fixed sizes, in this case eight characters at a time, including the null terminator. This means we can look at the length of the encrypted keys and know roughly how long the password is. It also means that once we decipher one of the blocks, then we would also know a part of a password that used the same block, making the rest of the solving easier. The most common block is simply the null terminator for any password that's exactly eight letters, making those passwords particularly easy. So in summary, if there's one block, we know the password was six or seven characters long, since the minimum length was six. If there's two blocks, and the second one is the hash of the null terminator, then the password is exactly eight characters long. And if there's two random blocks, it's between nine and 15 letters long. This leads to a really massive crossword-like puzzle best illustrated by this XKCD comic. I'll show you how I play this game for real, but before I do that, let's quickly go over some strategies about how you can make your accounts more secure. The number one best thing you can do is to use different passwords on every website. This might sound like it would be too hard to remember, but there are password management services out there that do this for you. More simply, you can just salt your own passwords. As an example, you could add the first two letters of the website name to the beginning of your password. So you still only need to remember one password, but it will be different on almost every site. The number two most important thing is to make sure your password is actually unique. It should be weird and long enough that literally no one else on the planet shares the same password as you. Lastly, whenever you see a large data breach or hack in the news, that usually means it's a good time to change your password. All right, now for the fun part. Let's play Guess the Password. There's no way to know for sure if we have the right answer, but we'll use our best judgment. So let's start out with an easy one first. So this one we can see going down, it's a wrestler, John Cena, almost certainly it's John Cena. And if we look at how John Cena is spelled in several of these cases, we can tell it's probably with a J capitalized and the C capitalized. Note that Adobe doesn't allow you to use the actual password as the hint. So a lot of times you'll see things like this on the bottom where it says John Cena one. This is to get around that restriction. Here's another more interesting example. So let's see, Canada, birthplace, honeymoon. So this is probably some famous area. Waterfall, okay, I'm starting to get a sense of what this might be. And way at the bottom, Buffalo, 
So this is almost certainly Niagara Falls, and it's probably all lowercase too. Because if there is this many people that chose the password, it's going to be the most common spelling of that. Here's another fun one. So already I see several clues about nuts and about trees, and also a lot of number ones at the end, which almost certainly means that this password is going to end with a one. So that means it's going to be either five or six letters followed by a number one. Because oaks and trees appear so frequently, this probably has something to do with an oak tree. And if you also look at squirrel and fruit, this is almost certainly going to be an acorn, which fits perfectly. So acorn one is this password. So if you thought that was fun, I'll leave some more here so you can work them out yourself. I really hope everyone's learned about the importance and nuances of passwords. And even if one person avoids being a hacking victim because of this, then it was definitely all worth it. Thanks for watching.